Okay, so this video is to catch us up on our mole ratio notes. So if you're absent, um, this is definitely the video that you want to be watching. So essentially, we're starting our new unit on stoichiometry. And stoichiometry is about the relationships between reactants and products in a chemical reaction. Um, now, remember, in a chemical reaction, you're going to have the reactants on the left side of the equation, and they produce the products. And stoichiometry is basically part of the reason why we have balanced chemical equations, what well, we use those balanced chemical equations in stoichiometry, but it's all based on the law of conservation of matter or mass. Okay, and we've talked about this law a lot um, last semester and the beginning of this semester, but essentially the mass of the products has to equal the total mass of the reactants as well, because whatever you start with, you have to end with, even if it's a little transformed. Um, matter cannot be created or destroyed. So, not destroyed or created. Okay. Now, the mole ratio is a ratio between the number of moles of any two substances in a balanced chemical equation. And we use our coefficients to help find them. Um, so, for example, here, the two the 1 and the 3 are our coefficients there. Uh, they are on the front, uh, the large numbers. Now, these small numbers, those are called subscripts. So please try not to get those confused. Now, if we switch to kind of a different example first, we talk about how you make a grilled cheese sandwich. And you're saying, Miss Nichols, what does making a grilled cheese sandwich have to do with chemistry? Well. Anything in the kitchen is chemistry, but in order to make a grilled cheese sandwich, I need two pieces of bread, a little bit of butter, so we'll just say one butter, and three pieces of cheese, and all of this produces one sandwich, okay? Now, all of these ingredients have a relationship not only with each other, but also with the sandwich, and so we could say if I want um, to know the relationship between bread to sandwich, I could say write it this way, the ratio of two bread for every one sandwich. I could also write it as a fraction, and it doesn't really matter which way I write it. I could also have a relationship with, between the bread and the cheese. Okay, all of these are in the equation with each other. Okay, they have a relationship. You can't have one without the other in order to produce the desired products. Now, if we look at the equation over here, two ammonia plus yields um, nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. Now, our coefficients become our numbers in our mole ratios. We just add the word mole to them. It's essentially telling us how many moles are required to complete uh, the reaction as it is presented in the equation. So if I want to know the relationship between ammonia and nitrogen, I would say that I have two moles of ammonia for every one mole of nitrogen. I'm essentially just using those balanced chemical equations. Now if we go on and continue, um, and you can look at the rest of these on your own time, but if we look at these, we want to look at uh, number one, okay? It says balance the equation if needed, determine all possible mole ratios for each equation. Now, if I want to make sure that this equation is balanced, all I have to do is list how the elements on both sides, and we have its own video about this, so I'm gonna quickly go through this. I have four aluminums, because four times one is four, I have six oxygens, four aluminums, and six oxygens. And so this gives me um, the same on both sides. So all I need there is to realize it's already balanced for me. So with it being already balanced, I just need to write all the possible mole ratios. So I'm going to see the relationship between aluminum and oxygen first and say that I have four moles of aluminum for every three moles of oxygen. It also has a relationship with aluminum oxide. 
I need four moles of aluminum for every two moles of aluminum oxide. Okay, these are the relationships that it has. But there's also a relationship between oxygen and aluminum oxide. And so that would be three moles of oxygen gas for every two moles of aluminum oxide. Okay. Now you're going to need to go through and balance all of these equations and write them out in order to do what we're going to do on the back. So if we look at problem number nine, okay, because this one deals with the reaction we've already done so far. It says how many moles of aluminum oxide are formed when 5.6 moles of aluminum is reacted with oxygen gas. So our given is this number here. They've given us 5.6 moles of aluminum, and they want to know how many moles of aluminum oxide there is. So that's our x, what we're trying to find. So we're going to set this up as 5.6 moles of aluminum is equal to x moles of aluminum oxide. Now remember, whenever we're doing our ratios, whatever is our unit, we pull to the bottom. So if I have moles of aluminum on the top, I'm going to write moles of aluminum on the bottom. Moles of aluminum oxide on the top, moles of aluminum oxide on the bottom. Now, by doing this, I get the number that I want to put by moles by looking at my balanced chemical equation. So if I go back to my equation from earlier, I see that I have a number 2 in front of aluminum oxide, so I'm going to write the number 2 here. And there is a there was a 4 in front of aluminum, so I put that there. And all I need to do is cross multiply and solve. So 5.6 times 2 is going to give us 11.2 moles of aluminum, moles of aluminum oxide. We bring all units there. Is that equal to x moles of aluminum oxide times my 4 moles of aluminum? Now, when we do this to get x by ourselves, we will divide by 4 moles of aluminum on both sides, cancels out, and then we have x moles of aluminum oxide is equal to 11.2 divided by 4. So when we do that, we get 2.8. And we have moles of aluminum cancel out with moles of aluminum here. So all we have left is moles of aluminum oxide for our answer. So if you have any questions, let me know. And we can go from there.